know in the comments because that was weird. It didn't start at 5.30 like it was supposed to. Um, but we're just waiting for Sam to get here. We could start cooking actually without him um, because we're going to be talking about Maxi for a while. So what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the You Know Ball podcast. I am your host, Troll Bro. Dude, we are live here on Playback. You can watch the early episodes on Playback dot tv slash you know ball in the next few weeks if you sign up we will actually be getting a kick back for that so you could sign up for playback this month watch us on there watch nba games with us i'll be streaming on tuesday for the rematch of sixers pacers in the in-season tournaments which we will talk about today and then also we will be streaming during uh celtic sixers and then also on friday for the sixers other in-season tournament game so a lot to discuss. My brain is very overwhelmed from the last 24 hours. I feel like one of the most vindicated people on planet Earth right now, having pushed Tyrese Maxi propaganda for the last three years. And we have in the house Mike Chiodo as our guest. Mike, uh, how are we feeling today after this Tyrese Maxi 50 point? master class last night against the Pacers. Well, hold yeah. on. Maxi, Maxi had 50 points. I, somebody <laughs> from Philly Twitter should have made a post about it. <laughs> you guys were pretty, you guys were pretty quiet about that. That's great. Yeah. I didn't see it at all. Yeah. yeah. Like, not one time. Yeah. This has been uh, like the best Sixer season ever. <laughs> and I was telling Trill before, before the pod, like we kind of made a, it was kind of going to be a bit before the season. Cause there was a point. It was a point in like early October where people were still miserable at the Sixers, and I just got annoyed. Like it's been six months. Like get over it. They're about exactly. to play again. And I was like, my bet's going to be this year that I love the Sixers, and I can't wait for them to start. And then they're really good, and I was right. <laughs> and it's not a bit anymore. You know, they do say that art uh, Im or Im uh, reality imitates art, so that's that that bit has has turned into real life. I I was talking with Chiota before the podcast, and I was basically saying. We immediately have gone from one of our bits being obviously the Sixers. We're all in on the Sixers has aged very, uh, very well in that it has become the reality. But the other one was that we were very, we were doc guys, me and Mike, we were, we were defending Glenn to the death. It was not Glenn's fault. Don't worry about it. And now we have had eight games, nine games with a real coach and the, difference between these two is drastic i just want to put it in perspective two years ago two oh, years ago clear, just to be clear the doc thing was a bit the clear. doc thing was a bit it was a bit it was a bit, it was a bit. but two years ago doc rivers was trying to put a player that just scored 50 points that is six foot two or six foot three in the dunker spot one year ago he tried to move him to the bench for d'anthony melton and make him into a six man. And to start the NBA season, he is one of the 10 best players in the NBA so far this year. The advanced metrics are off the fucking charts. He was incredible last night, once again, against the Pacers, upping his averages across the board. He could pretty much get wherever he wants on the court at any time. He could play on the ball, off the ball. I've kind of run out of things to say about him, but I feel like, this conversation that we need to have now is like before it was like I was comparing people were calling me crazy two years ago when I was comparing his per 36 numbers when he was barely playing to Jamal Murray and uh, De'Aaron Fox and these guys that were like borderline all stars at the time. And then about a year ago, I started looking at his stats and I was like, his stats are actually more comparable to like Damian Lillard and Steph Curry. Now keep in mind, it's 10 years after those guys played. So obviously stats have been inflated by a lot, but to start this year, his stats are just like breaking my brain, how good they are. And a lot of people online have also said, you know, when comparing him to other players or other young players that he is, you know, in such a good context because he plays with Joel Embiid, which is obviously true. Joel won MVP last year. He's been top, two and MVP for three straight years now. But the thing that has really blown me away is how good Maxi is when Embiid isn't on the court. Like how many times, Mike, watching the Sixers over the last five to six years, 
have we gone had Embiid go to the bench and been like, we're good. Don't worry. Like last night they pulled away during the non-Embiid minutes. Like yeah, this just crazy. doesn't happen. This never happened before. Never Ever. happened before. I mean, at best case, the last couple of years, they would be like passable. Like with Harden, sure. they'd be passable. And you'd be like, all right, so it's even, so it's a win. They're like, I don't know this. I don't have the stats for me, so I don't know. So, I do. but there's been like three games this year. I think there's been like three games this year where Embiid's going out of the fort, going out at the end of the third. It's been somewhat close, maybe five, ten point lead. And he doesn't ha- hasn't even had to play or he didn't have to come back into like three minutes left and the game was in hand. So very weird feeling. Something very strange is happening in Philadelphia. <laughs> Mike said it. This is a special, special coach. Uh, Sam Sam gets the flex because Sam was higher on the Sixers than basically anyone that was following the team, any national podcast. Sam, you were you were cooking. They're clearly yeah. one of the two or three best teams in the East, and you were saying it basically all off season. They they called me a madman. They said I was pandering to the YKB <laughs> audience. Um, I, Will treated me very nasty. He was very nasty to me on the podcast. He said, "Sam, you just you just like you just like to pander." And I said, "No, he's like G. He's a strong guy. He's got a big voice. He's like nurse. Plays the guitar. It's the defensive rotations. It's uh, yeah. I mean, I think Nick Nurse is one of these cur- coaches that." you can't have for like a long time. Um, I think Ime Udoka, uh, speaking of another team having some early yeah. success, another one of these coaches, but these guys who are kind of hard asses and are kind of professional. Very different, for very different reasons though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thus far. <laughs> I will have to say, Nick, oh, that was good. Mind. Nick was yeah. in Toronto, so you don't know how that he, you know, he's yeah, in a real say, city. Well, he's in a real city now. Well, I'm just saying, like, keep an eye on Nick's LinkedIn profile. Let's just say that. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna keep going here. Uh the what is happening though, I, I do think that the, eventually, like this, you know, I I do think that eventually the the Sixers will stop playing like perfect basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree, but yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I do think, you know, again, this is part of what makes the Sixers such a good regular season team is they have this formula of having um, no bad players, no bad players, even with um, the horrible thing that happened to Kelly Oubre, that's going to sideline him for a little bit. You just have Nick Batum and he just comes in and it's mostly fine because you just have like this roster, this um, deep roster of guys. And I think, you know, the elevation of Maxi. Um, I don't think it's a coincidence this happened when James Harden stopped playing, for example. Sure. And I think that that is part of what you need to do is you can only have one guy be elevated like this. And I think Trill and, you know, Mike, you guys have correctly identified. I think um, that, you know, Maxi was a guy who at least was worth taking a look at as one of these type of guys who like, what does it look like when he has the car keys and like, he has a little bit more leeway and he popped, you know, like this is exactly the type of thing. And this is, this is kind of what I was looking at when I was predicting the Sixers, um, you know, to be a, a top three seed um, in the East. I mean, it is, it is a long season, um, but very I still long. do feel, I still do feel very good about the Sixers being a top three seed in the East. And again, like I was saying last episode after um, the Celtics uh, Sixers game, this is not, the East is open. This I think the Celtics are up above, even though they did lose to the Sixers. I still do think the six uh, the Celtics are the best team in the East, but with the caveat that they have a giant injury liability guy who could go down at any time and they suddenly become very vulnerable. So I think it is absolutely possible for the Sixers to make the finals. And I think if you make the finals this year, the East or the West is going to be such a bloodbath that you could just be chilling and <laughs> watching those teams beat each other up. And who knows? You know, maybe. If Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. get hurt by the time the Nuggets win the West, like it, it's right there. It's right Jamal there. Murray's already hurt, so that's yeah. uh, that. Like yeah. I, I uh, look. Obviously, like I said, very long season. We're only an eighth of the way through the season, really. Like that's where we're at right now, and we're gonna learn more about kind of what the Sixers need. I think there are some things that we can talk about, but the leap that Maxi has made with his usage going up with his self-creation being much better to start this season, with him being such an improved defender and passer that it really does feel like... I I was talking about it, and I was like, 
it's almost like, hey, what would a second best player look like with Joel Embiid? Like the best version. I was like, oh, well, you know, he would be able to shoot pull up threes and run the pick and roll and play off the ball, maybe be a dribble handoff partner and also be able to score efficiently at all three levels. And Tyrese Maxey has to start the season has basically been like Damian Lillard mixed with fucking Chris Paul. <laughs> like it's been insane. I haven't seen someone at his age perform this well in a brand new role that is really carrying the team. And look, like we said, very early, they have still had a week schedule outside of that Celtics game. They've played some pretty rat teams, as Chris Vernon would say. Uh, but the offense is what's the most shocking to me, because all through these years, outside of like last year with Harden, where, you know, in the regular season, Harden can still carry an offense, at least he could last year. Um, and, uh, and kind of throughout the Joel and beat era, the strength of this team has never really been half court offense or offense in general. It's, it's generally been, you're going to have a really good defense. You need to make your offense good and passable. But this year, the offense is just fucking jumping off the charts just to show you in the 236 minutes that Joel and beat and Tyrese Maxey have played together. They have a 122 offensive rating, which would be the best in the NBA. The in the 105 minutes that Tyrese Maxey has played without Joel Embiid, which goes to my point earlier, they have a 126 offensive rating, and in the Joel Embiid non Tyrese Maxey minutes, they have a 121 offensive rating. All would be, if not the best, close to the best offense in the NBA. The 126 in the non Joel minutes is like breaking my brain because we've never had these things before we've never had the team get out running without Joel we've never had the team rebound in the way that they have so far we've never had the connective kind of egalitarian offense that they've shown through these handful of games and Maxi's leap is the biggest part of all of this what were you saying Chiodo? Uh, we have a disaster on our hands <laughs> what Nick Batum is out tomorrow for personal reasons again yeah I don't, what is going on Nick I hope he's okay. Yeah, I hope he's all right. Jesus. Like, Joel Embiid is questionable. Joel, it's the NBA Cup, man. Wait, yeah. Let's go. We're, we're, it's the NBA Cup. We have to be absolutely locked in. But, um, but I mean, look, they still are deep, but it is getting to the point where, like, no Ubre, obviously, prayers up for Kelly. Yeah, sure. Maxi saying that was special to me when Maxi scored yeah. 50 and then said we did it for Kelly, a guy I just met, but I love. And I was like, this is why he's the GOAT, dude. Yeah, this is have, why he. This is why Maury made him untouchable, dude. We have a really special group in Philadelphia. But um, <laughs> uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. I don't know. So, so I was gonna say something. It was gonna be a good point. I have I more maxi propaganda. I'll just start spouting that off. Currently, he is fifth in the NBA in box plus minus. He is third in the stat LeBron box uh, score. He is also second it, behind only uh, he who shall not be named in win shares per 48. Um, he is currently number one in BPM amongst players under 23. Do you guys want to guess who is behind Maxi in players 23 and under, I should say, in BPM based on the start of this season? So think about guys 23 and under. Cade Cunningham's definitely behind Maxi. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's probably about 50 to 60 spots behind him, I would imagine, in this stat. Uh, but 23 and under, Ant? 20, yeah, Ant, Ant. Is, Ant is number five. I mean, did you say he was one? Uh, Maxi is one. So everyone's behind him. Everyone is behind him, but the, you, you guess Ant is five, and then there are uh, then there's four, four two, three, and two. two. Not Evan Mobley. I see someone. Who'd you say? Paolo? Paolo is not. It is Tyrese Halliburton, who oh, yeah. is... I forgot. Either, he's still 23 and under. He, he's, he turns 24 soon, but but the point here is that Halliburton is a BPM monster. He's like almost... Oh, because he gets so many points, assists, he scores efficiently. He, and he also gets steals, so his d defensive BPM isn't that bad. Shangun is number three. That is correct. And then number four is Scotty Barnes. So these are basically everyone other than Maxi was a lottery pick or a near lottery pick. And I think one of the things that we talked about forever with Maxi was the reason why people hadn't come around on this idea that he could be a top 
whatever player was because he was drafted with the 21st pick and we have insane draft spot bias until someone is just undeniably way better than where they went in the draft. So we also have the overcorrection where if a guy gets drafted really high, we give him all the benefit of the doubt for years and years and years. But to me, it's clear like we did me and Sam did our 2020 redraft and we did our 25 play, best players under 21 and I'm sorry, under 25 in the NBA last week. And I came out of that just being like, after last night, I'm like, okay, did, did I get the redraft wrong? I had Maxi third behind Halliburton and Anthony Edwards. And also I uh, put Maxi ninth on my list of for the best guys under 25. And the more I think about it, the more I'm like, yeah. He doesn't have a health injury concern like guys above him, like Zion. He doesn't have off the court issues like John Morant. Um, and then, like, just f when it comes down to it, you're putting him up against guys that are the best prospects in the NBA: Luca, Ant, Paolo, Wemby. Like, if, if Maxi was drafted like ninth, which is where he was supposed to be drafted, like, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Stuff, yes, if he was drafted like ninth in that draft, he'd be firmly in that combo. I think yeah. people have a hard time elevating him to that combo because where he was drafted and where they, he wasn't thought of as this superstar coming out. Yeah, but he is. And it's like now you have to reevaluate what level of player he can become because even if the shooting regresses, even if. Uh, you know, some of the self-creation stuff is tougher against better defenses, which, you know, look, he wasn't very efficient in the Boston game, but he also had that little stretch where he kind of took over for a little bit. Um, even if that's the case, he's still 23 in his first season as a lead guard. And if the if the season ended today, based on this first tenth of the season that we've had, he would be first or second team all NBA based on these stats. Like he probably wouldn't get first team just because it's the same thing with the legacy bias where guys that might not have as good stats or uh, advanced metrics get it over the guys that do because they're just more recognizable names. And it's also it's also just best five now. It's not best It guys. is, but we, we talked about this before and we think that they're gonna, we think that what they're gonna do for the first year is still try to make it like a semblance of a normal team. Like they're mm. not gonna do like f th four bigs and a wing or something. Like we still think it's gonna be like, to, it will be like more normal like it will be like okay maybe Jokic and Embiid make it but then Giannis is the other forward or Tatum is the other forward and then they'll try to give it to two guards still to try to maintain some of the old formula at least yeah. for the first year or two yeah that's what I Bill think Simmons that's what will be leading the charge on that exactly it's that's exactly team, bro yeah yeah it's gotta, team, right? it's gotta make sense in the courthouse it doesn't make any sense if you Giannis don't do and that. Embiid and Jokic cannot play together you're gonna <laughs> tell me Giannis and Embiid and Jokic can play together that's 100 percent gonna happen <laughs> But like I said, based on these stats to start the year, like these things that he is doing through the first handful of games are legitimately historical. I, I have a stat here from Sport Info 24-7, Mike Lynch, who always posts great stats. Tyrese Maxey is just the third player in NBA history to have any nine-game span, not just to start the season, any nine-game span, averaging 28 points, five rebounds, seven assists, and a block per game on 50, 40, 90 splits. The other two are Larry Bird and Kevin Durant. Like, what he is doing is shit that is historical in terms of efficiency, in terms of kind of just the counting stats in general. And the Sixers have one loss in a game that they honestly should have won and could potentially be undefeated. So, like... If the Sixers are, we were talking about All Star before the game, before the year. We were talking about that. Like now, we're talking like All Star starter. If he keeps this up, All NBA, and that is just a leap that we have. I never expected this early. Yeah, Maury is definitely going to be trying to get him off All NBA, so it doesn't affect his contract. He'll be pulling out the propaganda machine <laughs> for Dame, but he doesn't you know, want the Derrick Rose he'll contract. Going through, he'll be going through back channels like. You know, he's kind of taking some shots away from Embiid. I'm not sure if that's what we want. <laughs> he'll be he'll be sending Halliburton's like uh, Darko metric. Like he's a, like Halliburton's like three spots ahead of Tyrese. Like, yeah. You might want to bump him down a little bit. No, I didn't even think of that. That actually, Maxi's going to end up probably walking away with a 30 percent max next off season, which is <laughs> it's just like unbelievable. Like like I said, like. I, I remember when we first drafted him, I was like, maybe he could he could be like a fringe all-star. And then he had the Denver game, 
in his rookie season. Yeah. Do you remember the Denver game when everyone was out with COVID? Oh, that was a classic. How could I forget that? So he had like 39 points, which was the most for a rookie sixer since Allen Iverson. And I was like, okay, maybe he could be like make an all-star team at some point. And then he just kept getting better and better. And I was like, okay, so he's definitely going to make the all-star team eventually. But now I'm like, the numbers here he's putting up for a guard his size with his touch and ability and just speed and all that shit. Like the num like I said, the numbers are comparable to a young Damian Lillard, to a young Steph Curry. Like it's it's insane how good he has become. And it's got to the point where like the Sixers could have the best duo in the NBA. Like I heard people say on other podcasts, Damon Giannis, and I'm like, no. Dame has not been nearly as good this Maxie year. Honestly, is, Giannis hasn't been either. Maxi has been better than Dame this year. It's mm-hmm. nine games, but Maxi has yeah. been better than Dame, and B's been better than Giannis. Yeah. yeah. So I don't even know. In a playoff but, series tomorrow, you'd rather have Maxi and Embiid than Dame. It Giannis. does for me, but yes. I, I feel like most advanced metrics have Maxi and Embiid in the top five that I've like looked at. The majority do. Yeah. 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 So I like mean, one two, they're definitely better. I don't want to hear it anymore. It's Tatum and Brown. Like, sorry. <laughs> well, would, would you even say it's Tatum well, and no. Brown? Yeah, Tatum I would and even Porzingis. Tatum and Porzingis. Tatum and the way that Tatum people prop up the Tatum and Brown duo, like, oh, this is a great duo. Like, no, Jalen Brown is like the 34th best player in the NBA. What yeah. are you talking about? Yeah. Kevin Durant and Devin Booker are on the same team. And Jason Tatum is the uh, 17th best player. In the NBA. <laughs> it's a little high. But... It's a big, <laughs> a little high. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I, I, I'm really trying to slander Tatum until I, I, I'm trying to make him MVP honestly look better. Slander. The better, the best, the Sixers could have the two best dudes in the league and Maxi and Embiid and Tobias and Embiid. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Sorry, Tobias is better than Tatum this year. That's what people are saying. <laughs> I mean, look, <laughs> no, actually, he's not ahead of him in advanced metrics, but I didn't his, say if this he, is just what people were saying. I, I'm just saying on Twitter, I saw a metric, I've never seen this metric before but I trust it with my life because it said that Tobias was one spot ahead of Giannis. Is that, was that the global rating one? Yeah. The global I don't rating. know what that is, but now it's getting posted everywhere and has <laughs> Maxi's the fourth best player in the league. So like, yeah. Like, like, yeah, this is, this is amazing. I love it. Um, and it is, it is amazing. Me and Mike talked about this during the stream the other day, how we went from like his rookie year being like, do you trade him for Kyle Lowry? And then his second year being like, do you trade him for Bradley Beal? And then it was like, do you trade him for Damian Lillard? And now I'm like, I literally wouldn't trade him for any player in the NBA. No. Like, because no, and I here's mean, if, like Luca asked out tomorrow. It'd be like, I guess no, I wouldn't. To. I wouldn't. Here's why. Give me, hear me out. I, know, I agree with you. I wouldn't want to. I'm just... We talked about this though, where first off, the homegrown star thing. Like someone tweeted at me and said, okay, you wouldn't trade Maxi for anyone in the NBA anymore. Okay would you trade Embiid for someone? And I was like, we've been through so much shit with Embiid. We've been through so much shit with Maxi. I would rather lose with those two dudes yeah. than win with yeah. anyone else. Yeah. And more importantly, like Maxi wants to be here. Maxi is like, and, and like this changes the calc. If Maxi can continue the trajectory, even if he just becomes consistently a Donovan Mitchell level player, you're going to be the next 10 years you're contending for titles based on the moves that you make around that. And like, we talked about it before, like the way, if, if Maxi is that level of all NBA guard, you're talking about Embiid being able to age more gracefully. If he's still and around, this is all like the next, like I would say three or four years are just like gravy. Like, cause our real window is like five years from now when Max is in his prime, he's peak and, and Embiid's just a supercharged version of Brook Lopez. I just cannot wait for that version of Embiid. I'm so excited for that version of Embiid. That's what I'm saying. I've been like, excited for that version for like three years. I just thought it was going to be on another team. And now it's going to be a sixer. Like, oh my God. Yeah. That's what I'm saying is like, and I think that Maxi being as good as he is and credit to Daryl, him nailing the Harden trade and nailing the Ubre signing has what? made it so that like, it changes the calculus for kind of how long Embiid would want to stay around. And now, like, I think even if they lost in the second round again, that Embiid yeah, sees how Embiid good Maxi is, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't think Embiid's going anywhere. No. Um, unless something like disasters happens. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, like you said, Dar- I've, we've all been very, very, very critical of Daryl the last, I don't know, two years, three years. You whatever. especially. Yeah, and I think he deserved it in a lot of ways. Like, yeah. especially during the Harden era, he... He was not very creative. He was just going no. back to the Rockets. Well, yep. Last offseason sucked. What I would say is, over the last since since the Ben since Ben asked out since that for or actually dating back to the Lowry thing when they were talking about trading Maxi for Lowry, mm-hmm. 
there have been so many different moments during Daryl's tenure here where he could have just fucked it all up. Yep. And he would have done he would have done one thing that just fucks it all up, like trading Maxi, including Maxi and a Lowry package, or tra- or, or the first uh, Harden package. Yeah, or the first Harden package, or like this year bringing hard or not making the move to trade Harden after those first two or three games or whatever it was. Right. Um. So like, and in general, just the moves he could have made. Like, there's just he's there's been a lot, so many moments in the last three years landmines where it's like this moment could have fucked it all up, and this and it would have just been done. And he hasn't done it yet. I, I, I look. Well, I John in the comments is saying it's dumb luck. I don't think it I is. I think they saw well, what they. I think they saw what they had with with Maxi. I'll say this yeah. much: all the other moves, sure, maybe there was some dumb luck built into that stuff. There has never been a legit report ever by yeah, I mean, any journalist that they were actually willing of, to trade Maxi for been anyone. A, there have been a ton of stars available the last couple of years, and like Mitt, Donovan Mitchell, Dame Lillard. Uh, Durant, they never really had a chance at Durant, but Durant, Harden, all these stars, and every single time it came around, even when like we were saying do it, yeah, it was always Maxi's not on the table. If Maxi's not on the table, they will yep. not trade him. And yeah. to his credit, he has done it. It's it's literally it's Andy's theory about Damian Lillard being Russell Wilson and Maxi being Jalen Hurts. Like it, it yeah. has come to fruition that he is that guy now and and you don't need to look for it changes and we talked about this before it changes the calculus for what you have to do with your top guys because yeah. before we were still like Maxi's coming into the season we're like he's probably still the third best player yeah, on a contender. I, I hated the cap space plan cuz I thought it was just ridiculous like you need another top exactly guy cuz I thought Maxi would be the third guy. But the entire calculus changed and Maxi makes a jump and he's now the second guy. He's the second, he's the top 15 guy. And now it's like that. You can use that cap space plan will be to find the third guy. Right. That changes or, or we can use anything that we have now. Yeah. They have the luxury of being able to find that third or fourth guy and then also be like, okay, we'll see how Kelly Oubre looks in the playoffs. We'll see how Tobias looks in the playoffs. We'll see if Batuma Rocco have any juice left. And they have so many options for next off season now that I think that it's going to be really interesting to see what they can kind of do here over the last, like, I don't think they need a third star, no, quote unquote, unless I think the only way it. I think they do it is if it's like dirt cheap, like, Hey, here's an opportunity where the- they just want to get off this contract and you view that contract as like a value basically. Yeah. Like, uh, like a Zach Levine type. No way. No, that's not going to no. happen. I think the move is to go find a high level third guy who's a high level role player, like yeah. an OG. Sure. Someone like that who is going to fill a role like our, our own Aaron Gordon. It's exactly um, who I was thinking. Gordon Wiggins for the Wiggins, uh, yeah. yeah for a few years ago. And like look, I know Tobias has started the year great and Ubre was awesome before he sadly got uh fucking hit by a car. It's just so insane, dude. I can't believe it. I'm I'm glad he's okay. But the I thought it was a bit when I got to watch. I literally was like, <laughs> what is happening? I, I isn't doing a bit. There's no way. But but as much as those guys in Batum have been great. I think it would be really nice to just have another wingish, three and D ish kind of ball handler type guy that you can rely on more consistently because, you know, those guys like Tobias still has his games where he's Tobias. <laughs> and then Ubre. Ubre was like shooting way over his head, and Batum is old. Like Batum, Batum has been fucking amazing in his first few games as a sixer. I'm not saying anything bad about him, but he also was playing less minutes last year. I don't think he's going to be able to put a ton of mileage on. Like he's 34 now, and he's going to be 35 in a month. Like I think that you need to be careful with these guys' minutes. And I think that the honestly, I, maybe this is just because we're high on Maxi, uh, like the Maxi juice of the last 24 hours, but. One of the guys that we talked about in the Discord today that I was like, man, it would be really nice, but I don't think the Knicks are going to move off him would be Emmanuel quickly. Just because, like, oh, cool, a secondary ball handler who can play with or without the stars, and then you have your bench guy to carry you when the team sucks without Embiid or Maxi on the court. Yeah, like, I, uh, we're talking about how deep they are, and they are, but I really want, like, a bench guy with some juice. Yeah, they don't have that. Like all their bench right now, especially when they had Ubre in the starting lineup, they had no bench score. Dude, like I love Cove, I love Batum, love everyone. No one's coming off the bench and giving them pop. No, 
And like Batum is having a new Melton there. That's I was going to say with Ubre out and Tobias seemingly sticking with the starters more often, the best be- bench ball handler you have is like very old Pat Bev or Nicholas Batum. Like it's not a good situation to the point where I just talked about those historical numbers that the offense is putting up through these first few games in the 23 minutes that one of Joel Embiid or Tyrese Maxey has not been on the court this season. They have a 77 <laughs> offensive rating, which is like, that's like Toronto Raptors worse than the Toronto Raptors in the half court. I wish we could, level. Like, I wish we could like age Turk Smith up by like five years. And we'd be set. Oh my god, we have Bones Highland at home, dude. Yes, he literally is Bones Highland. I'm telling you, Turk <laughs> Smith is Bones Highland at home. I love him. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, so so far, I've just been absolutely blown away. Um, wh- one last piece of maxi propaganda here. So he scores 50 in that game. I just, I can't, I like. We, we've been kind of pushing for him to shoot more threes. Like that's been like the thing that he hasn't really done. And he kind of didn't shoot a lot to start the year, but last night he hits four in the first half. He's honestly not still not. I want him to shoot like not even an exaggeration, 10 to 12 threes a game. Oh, yeah. He's one of the best three point shooters in the NBA. He's also able to get, he create his own threes and he's just such an insanely elite attacker that if you're constantly putting up that volume of threes, the closeouts are going to have to be that much more fucking just on point in order to stop you. And he's just such an unstoppable force either on or off the ball when it, when, when the shot is falling. So right now um, I have, I I pulled up a, a stat. So maxi stats through this handful of games, he's averaging 28 points per game, five rebounds and seven assists. These are the players that have done this since 2000. LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Luka Doncic, and then this year, uh, Nikola Jokic, Devin Booker, and Tyrese Maxey. So, like, once again, historical shit that he's doing through this handful of games, even when these numbers regress, which I imagine they will a little bit, I still think that this is just like, like he's just he's already better than I had ever anticipated, and he's twenty three years old. <laughs> like, I don't... People people forget that he's twenty three. That's an important thing. That twenty three. Yeah. I feel like a, I feel like a fucking Celtics fan with Tatum right now, but he's twenty three years old. Like actually, only a year younger than Tatum, or two years, two, Tatum, so. two or three years now. I think and Tatum's right? not older than twenty five. Tatum's twenty five, right, Sam? He's nineteen. <laughs> he's still 19. Yeah, he's still 19. He's still 19. Uh, yeah, I believe he. I believe he is. I mean, he might have just turned 26, but he's either 25 or 26. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say he. He's still. I think he just turned 25 a few months ago. Yeah, 26 25. in March. Tatum yeah, could yeah, be the third star. <laughs> yeah, we just gotta wait out the Celtics now. It is funny how all the conversations have shifted in the last two weeks, where like it was like, where's Joel going to like what star can the Sixers get now or what guys can the Sixers get? Because once again, obviously that's all changed because of this leap that we've seen and Nick nurse doing absolute miracles on me, but it is, it is We're going back to Giannis. We're going back. Even though he signed the extension, we're back on the Giannis trade demand. Might've been a massive mistake by Giannis to sign that extension. (laughs) Yeah. It's coming back. Giannis could also be washed in a year or two. And he might need that extension. So (laughs) no skill. A little ugly. I'm just saying, you watch Giannis. It's, it's getting a little ugly out there. T- tall, tall Russ. Get, tall get Russ. a little ugly. Look, I think it's cool that he won his uh, Mykonos Mouse Championship a few years ago, <laughs> and I think that uh, you know. <laughs> I didn't know if Sam had heard that one yet. <laughs> uh, I like that Mykonos no. Mouse Championship. But is uh, the Giannis contract a bad contract? Could we get that at the deadline? <laughs> it might be a bad contract. Do you want to be paying 34-year-old Giannis 60 million? I don't. Bulls are gonna swap Lonzo and uh Vooch for Giannis. <laughs> yeah, I want Lonzo bad. I just need him to get healthy. Well yeah. I I, I, a lot of people have been talking about because the reason I wanted to get quickly on the Sixers was because he didn't sign the extension. He's mm-hmm. obviously boys with Maxi and to continue the college friend thing if with the Eagles, what they did with getting Devonta Smith. Yeah. And we need we need Coach Cal at the finals games. Um, yeah, 
having Coach Cal there he for the special. vibe. He has special vibes. He does have special vibes. They too. always win when he goes to the game. And it's you know, always like Tyrese, a great win. Tyrese, he was a he was such a great he was Even such a he learner. Did a terrible in college. job with Tyrese. <laughs> He always does such a bad job, and then these guys get to the NBA and they're I think free he, from I think him. He gets, I think he does a bad job on purpose, so these guys are used to adversity. I, I respect <laughs> I'm honestly not – like, it, it could be true. Like, every Kentucky guy is awesome in the pros but sucks in college. Like, I, yeah, it is It is amazing what he what he is able to do. Uh, yeah, I, it's, it's – Answer that. Great. Lonzo has more of a bag right now than Giannis. That's – One leg. That's not arguable. Paul Reed has more of a bag than Giannis. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let, let's see. I'm just saying, like, uh, Coach Coach Bud, uh, start your engines. <laughs> Who, who's getting Coach Bud? The Coach Bud sweepstakes to get Giannis. I was gonna say, Coach Coach Bud. Uh, they're they're gravely. Oh, also, I have to say thank you to Giannis for going on vacation with Pascal Siakam. Uh, at the same time that they were hiring a coach and him talking up Adrian Griffin, and I'm assuming talking down Nick Nurse. Uh, so they chose Adrian Griffin over Nick Nurse, which led to Nick Nurse taking the Sixers job. And Adrian Griffin is a bozo, dude. He has no idea what he's doing. Yeah. He is a I mean, weirdo who... It's always, it's always a great sign when a very respected NBA coach quits a two days before the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Like, like on the court, like literally goes from the practice court to the front office and is like, yeah, I'm out. Bye. <laughs> and then Dame posts photos on Instagram live with when they, when he first got there, Dame was posting pictures of him dapping up with uh, Terry Stotts. Mm. Like they're still have a very good relationship and you just traded for Dame. And like the Bucks obviously have had a weird start. Because uh, Dame's been out for a few games and they just haven't been good. Like, yeah, they're, they're a middling to bad team to start the season. Yeah. Uh, they're definitely way worse than their expectations at, at the very least. Yeah. But the reason I bring this up is because I know that the Celtics wrote it out with Missoula last year and that's proving to probably be a fine choice. I'd argue that. Not when they could have gotten Nick Nurse. What I mean, did you say, Sam? Oh, wait, I no, said I, I, I might. I might argue that. I mean, he's he, he's been fine. I, I think it's going to come back to haunt us at the point. He's still getting in weird shouting matches with with, with like the yeah. media after losses, being like, "Hey, Nick, uh, Nick, your article from two years ago was fucking <laughs> bullshit." Yeah, I saw that. Why were you? We're talking about he's, you in the game, man. Why are you? He's talking Carl Havoc, it? dude. It was 2016. Yeah. It was seven years ago, dude. Nick Nurse yeah. versus Missoula in the conference yeah, finals. It's gonna be a movie. I, and I mean, by the way, Joe is right. As Brian points out, I mean, Gary Washburn is a bum, but it's just like, it's not like, <laughs> it, it doesn't, it doesn't exude confidence in me and confidence sure. in your project as a coach that right. you're that, getting mad at one of our worst journalists, you know, like coach like Carl Havoc. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's unbelievable, dude. He's, he's, he's such a funny fucking guy, dude. I, I wish he, like, he was not in control of my team because like, if I were rooting for another team, I would be all in on. Yeah. But this, this is, this is a doc experience. Yeah. Yeah. I guess maybe that's the thing is it's just like, yeah, I wish, I just, I wish he wasn't doing, uh, uh, not great job with my team. Like there's a huge difference in the team this year. I also uh, feel myself being inclined to credit the giant improvements to the now, um, let's just say, competent assistant coaching staff we have versus like last year where we have like a lot of like really good assistant coaches. And... Yeah, but why weren't they competent? Was the what? coach was was the coach in the uh, well, the octagon no, trying to give I them mean... CTE? <laughs> Yes, but also, I mean, in, in Joe's defense, those were all Emay's guys. And the second Emay got hired, they were we like, have breaking slot. Jay Crowder is out for eight weeks. Yeah. Honestly, you know, you know, you're gonna say that's not a big deal. It yeah. absolutely is because the, the Bucks, Bucks were really like, thin, and Crowder's actually been pretty decent to start the year. The Bucks have three yeah. players, so it's a big deal. Their depth is yeah. like so yeah. bad right now, dude. And god damn, like I, the Sixers are going to cruise to the one seed. Like I'm sorry, like look at this. Bucks oh, the Cel- I think the Celtics. The, it's the look Celtics. At their depth. Celtics. What happens when Porzingis inevitably misses like three weeks? Yeah, that could be tough. That could be tough. But you could say the same thing about uh, Embiid too. Yeah. Well, we are. 
us the he's bird, been the last couple of years. Yeah. He, I think I think what's gonna it's gonna unironically like regular season like number one seed. What I think it's gonna come down to is how much Boston and the Bucks split the buyout guys. Because like they both yeah, need like yeah. Yeah, yeah seven to eight guys, and it's like are they all gonna go to one team? Are they gonna split them? Is like nobody gonna? Because I think both teams are in a position to really benefit from like one to two good rotation players, you know. So you like, for example, don't have to play Luke Cornett and Peyton Pritchard, or yeah. uh, you know Chris whatever. Paul's probably a Celtic. Who? Chris Paul. Chris Paul. I was. Th- I know. I'm. We were Let's talking go. about a Chris Paul because we <laughs> think that the way that the Warriors season has started, their record's good. But if you watch the games, you could tell they're not very good. Like anytime they play a good team, they're certainly not good enough. Like you have Steph Curry on your team, you should be better. I mean, Chris didn't they Paul lose to the Nuggets by like one possession though. The uh, Jamal Murray and they were missing a lot of guys in that game. The Nuggets. They're, I'm telling you. Watch the Warriors games. They're they're not as good as their record or their net rating. Like there's clearly a few missing f- ingredients in the team. They don't have a second scorer. Steph has already scored more points. I believe someone said Steph has scored more points than Clay Wiggins and Draymond combined to start the year. Um, and then in a, in addition to that, like the young guys really have not progressed in the way that they kind of needed them to, and. They really and like Chris Paul is shooting 17% from three, 36% from the field. Like they need either a second scorer, like, or they need to figure out a way to make that defense so elite around Steph. Because they can't defend a point of attack either. Like I was watching the game last night, and look, it is Anthony Edwards. He's been absolutely incredible this year, but I still think that's gonna be a massive issue with them like dude and yeah look look at look at the andy bailey stats set in uh steph curry is is currently second in the league with three wins over replacement uh andrew wiggins is 462 wiggins has been the worst player in the nba to start the year he's been terrible and i really do think that they need some sort of upgrade whether that's like trading for pascal siakam at the deadline maybe just saying fuck it and taking a flyer on carl anthony towns or something like that but i think chris paul is going to be traded and bought out and that i would imagine the teams that are fighting over him are like the celtics bucks and sixers maybe the Heat. yeah well and then they turn the keys over to brandon podcast our lord and savior who's better um, who's better than all these bozos we were just talking about that's clay right. thompson who the fuck is that? Washed. You know, yeah, washed. It's, it's Brandon podcast time. You had your chance, Clay. Yeah. Now you, but, now you gotta get out of the way. But yeah, this is the thing, is like I think that I, I can you think of it, Sam, can you think of any other buyout guys you'd be interested in? Because I'm buyout. Well, the, the thing is that there's not really a ton of guys who have like bad contracts. And again, yeah. the problem with this is you've also got to like You've also got to kind of feel out like, because the other thing is, I'm not even really sure the Warriors would even buy out Chris Paul because they want. No, they to be wouldn't. Good. They would trade him, is what I'm trying oh, to say. Oh, So okay. you, you, tra- so, so for example, yeah, Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Moody, and Chris Paul for Pascal Siakam, and maybe I don't know if you could throw in picks. Whatever or whatever. picks, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And then Toronto goes. We just did this for the young guys and whatever pick we can get. And we'll turn around and then buy out Chris Paul because it makes no sense. So that's a great example because this is exactly my point about this. There's like two teams in the NBA that would buy him out because a lot of the other teams are going to convince themselves oh, we yeah. can be kind of competitive. You know, like the Raptors. If the Bulls got perverts, him, they would do the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the Raptors would do that too. They're perverts. Yeah. They would be like, yeah, we're uh, seven games under 500 here in uh, March. Yeah, but we can we can make the 10th seed. Like let's uh trade another first round pick for yeah, they, Vassell. Yeah, or exactly. Whatever the fuck they're gonna do. Yeah. I've got but, a I've got a great buyout name for the Celtics. Spurs would do that, but okay. Well, yeah. who's that? Perfect one. Definitely gonna get bought out somewhere. Who's that? He's coming home, Marcus Morris. <laughs> let's go. That, that's another. No, 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 no. Sam, <laughs> I'm telling you, Sam. Uh, no. Sam, I was played like, five like, minutes the other yeah. night, and we were throwing. Friday, the... I was like. Dude, like leading into the week, I was like, let's give Marcus Morris a shot. Like, just see, I, he probably dude, not that. He sees what he has. It took he's two so bad. Oh, no, no, no. Two, I'm not kidding. It took two. One time up in the court dude. in the back, and I was like, oh my god. Yeah. 
You know, you're things. misunderstanding my reaction. My reaction was, oh yeah, he might, uh, he would suck bad enough that a, a good team would cut him. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> which is the, which you don't want the, to take a flyer on him. I'm telling you, we yes. watched the game the other day and we were yeah. just like, it is, it is shocking how washed he is. And he, he was playing against the Pistons, dude. It's not like we were playing, and the Pistons without like five rotation players. Like we, I yeah. was, I was floored at how bad he is now. Uh, yeah. And like, look, even two or three years ago, he was a perfectly serviceable, uh, like bench wing, and now he's just completely unplayable, like fully unplayable. Uh, but um, just back I have, to, I have, I have, I have one more bio guy. All right, let's hear it. Uh, James Harden. <laughs> I would support that wholeheartedly. <laughs> if you were to place odds like on what team James Harden will be on um, in February after the deadline, the a Chinese team has to be in the top five. Yeah, top it's three gotta... maybe. Yeah, they it's going to be the favorite. Lakers. I'm I'm predicting right now the Lakers will have Harden next off season. They will be the team taking it. They will talk themselves into it because they're the Lakers. I think Harden's in China next year. China? Yes, I do. Some no, I think he's. I think. Oh, I don't know. I, so, so Mike said this the other day. Uh, I was I, joking then, but after the last couple of games, I'm like, I think he's in China next. He year. was. Do, well, he. You were. You were saying the other day. I was talking about the the fake Woj tweet that because uh, Sam. Harden's going to need leverage in his contract negotiation talks because he right. still has to negotiate a contract after this year. So Mike had this whole fake Woj tweet about how about how Harden has always respected Greg Popovich and the Spurs organization, a Let's relocation go. to Texas to play alongside rising superstar Victor Webanyava could be something that interests. Like those are the kind of tweets we're going to be getting yes. about Harden in these Absolutely. next few weeks. Absolutely, though. That's that's absolutely happening. I can see yep. that. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, James Harden is uh, interested in um, uh, pairing with the Thunder's young core, which intrigues him. And he's himself oh, returned a back. Yeah, to place where he was drafted. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just shit like that. No, that's absolutely like on the th on the things. Um, I'm kind of like you would just like, like please delete my number, <laughs> right? There's guys. Um, it's funny. I'm like going through like contracts to see like what guys might be bio guys, and I'm like getting to like Wizards guys, and it's like, well, I don't think Gallinari is coming back to the. To no, him. he might be a buck. Um, Muscala might. Here. Yeah, Gallinari yeah. to the buck sounds about right. Yeah, something like that. And the Gallinari only playing uh, basketball right now. Yeah, he's playing. He he he's, he's, playing. he's hooping the other night. We just played the he, Wizards. I did not know the, that. The only other guy I could see that's like a possible buyout guy is Reggie Bullock, like with the Spurs. Already, like, yeah. No, yeah, he's not like, on the Spurs anymore. He's on the uh, Rockets. Oh. oh, I missed that. When was that? Trade? He signed. He signed with them uh, after he got bought out. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I missed the buyout process of uh, Reggie Bullock being on the Spurs. I could be wrong here, but I don't think he's in their rotation. Someone can can yeah, correct me. Yeah, he is. And if he you're not, not, yeah, he's no, not he's in their not. rotation. If you're not in the Rockets, I know the Rockets have been good to start the year, but if you're not in the Rockets rotation, I have a hard time believing no. that you. I mean, and look, the Celtics and Bucks could have had him for free a month and a half ago, and they were yeah. like, "We're good." Yeah, I, I think more likely what's going to happen in the Celtics case is I think that they're going to try to use second round picks to get Andre Drummond from the Bulls or something like that into like yeah. I know that, that would, would kill me. me. That yeah, would kill me. yeah. So that that's we, probably we, what we I need, would. We need Drum God in the Caruso deal. Yeah, the Caruso yeah. deal. Yeah, Drummond's coming home. Drummond, Drummond is coming home. We're getting Caruso and Drummond to 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 put a bow on top of the vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but last last piece of maxi propaganda before we fully move off that, um, shout out to Drew Davis seventy one who tweeted uh, that in a game with fifty points, five assists, seven rebounds, and three blocks, the only players who have done this in Basketball References database are Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and Tyrese Maxi. So seems good to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Maxi is the second best player on that list. So, yeah, who's better at age twenty three, Maxi or Kobe? Good point. Good new, point. New Kobe and Shaq just dropped. Yes, we're going to be unironically. I did actually. That video. I was. I was looking earlier today. Got me. Kobe and Shaq. It was their fourth year together. Oh, new head co championship head coach came over. Oh, uh -huh. 
I'm just saying. Just so is that way. the new comp? It's not the 2011 I, I maps anymore? I, I think it's the old. We're too good for the 2011 maps. Wow. So we're too good to be the 2011 The map. other comp I'm thinking is 016ers if and Mutombo was Embiid, which would be a pretty good team. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then I was also looking at the 94-95 Rockets. Those are the, the, the two. Was that when list. they got Drexler or the one before Drexler? That was the year before Drexler. I think so. Yeah. But, but I, the, the teams I've been the two teams I've been hyper focused on for our comp is the ninety four ninety five Rockets and the o o ninety nine two thousand Lakers. Those are my two teams. So, so is Tobias Robert Ori? Yes, he, Kelly he, is Rick Fox. Both handsome. Mm-hmm. Both th- that work works perfectly. Yeah. We just need our Derek Fisher. Get the Anthony Melton out of here and get our Derek Fisher. Yeah. Need our Derek Fisher, who could be Alex Caruso. <laughs> I mean, Derek no. Fisher was definitely more of a ball handler. Than I know, Fisher, but we but... got to stretch here. The, the Derek Fisher type is not really exist in the NBA anymore. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we need we need Derek Fisher to round out the rotation right now. So I would take Derek Fisher right now. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I mean, him and Chris Paul are basically the same age. If you if you if you think about it, Chris Paul. I was looking at Chris Paul's stats earlier, and I couldn't get there with a Chris Paul buyout, or even just like, hey, we'll send you. De- or we couldn't even do it because we'd have to give up positive he's rotation so, players so to do slow. it. He's so yeah. slow, and they're playing so fast and free. Yeah, and... yeah, he's not good anymore. It's, hard it's unfortunate. To me. I can't. I can't watch another plotting possession with Chris Paul just dribbling the ball. I agree. But getting Chris Paul would be so fun to just win a title with Chris I also, Paul. I don't think Chris Paul would choose here with Maury. And oh, no, he wouldn't. No, no definitely and not. And especially because it'd be like a backup role. Yeah. Which is no. going to be anywhere, but like I think on the Celtics, it would at least be like a clear path to playing time. Sure. It could be his Sam Cassell in 08 ring, and Sam Cassell, funny enough, is stolen from us by the fucking thank dirty, God. dirty Celtics. Thank, thank God. Well, no, but Sam Cassell was a big part of – didn't you hear Coach I K? Think- you know, Sam yeah. Cassell, he was a point guard, too. He developed John Wall in Washington. He Doc Rivers, he's Jackson. a point guard. <laughs> uh, but that's why that's why Max, he knew Maxi was going to be a star here. You know, he's, yep. he's great. He compared him. He actually, coming out, it's so funny because he compared him to SGA and Jamal Murray. And now as time goes on, I'm like, all right, maybe he was spitting. Well, he's better <laughs> Even than though Jamal they're Murray. very different. Yeah. He's better than Jamal Murray. Like that. Okay. So Jamal Murray is, as we've talked about, a playoff merchant, a 16-game merchant of well, epic proportions. It's we insane. Do, we do need to judge because I don't want to say Jamal Murray is just a product of Jokic's success, but I don't want to give Jokic credit. So I know. So yeah, maybe we should just move on from this. Yeah. Yeah. Because he I carried would just say Jamal right? Murray in a different environment is not, you know, he's not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and he is, he's also blatantly he is, running he is from the dodging NBA the NBA Cup. He's terrified of Tyrese Maxey in the NBA Cup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, all right. We're, last we're, this is the regular we're, season. He can't prove it in the regular season. Once again, Jamal Murray fails in the regular season. He's a playoff merchant. Yes. Um, the disgusting. First all, all he can do is win in the playoffs. Just what to address that, that comment, like, I, playoff yeah. merchants are fine, but I'm kind of focused on the regular season right now. I'm not, yeah. I'm not I'm not trying to fast forward to the playoffs. I'm enjoying this. Like we can worry about that when we get there. <laughs> We're <laughs> definitely gonna worry about it. <laughs> Where Sam want? earlier Sam earlier was like it's a long season. I'm like, that's a good thing. We don't we yeah. enjoy this. Keep what it keep it away. <laughs> do, you want, do you want a 16 game player or an 82 game player? Because guess what? One is way bigger than the other. Exactly. One is over 10, yes. almost five times more big. Well, we have a new term that's about to enter the NBA dictionary. A three-game player for the NBA Cup. Let's go. Quarterfinal, <laughs> semifinal. Yeah. Who, who are will the be a three-game player? player? Yeah, we say we're getting our first sample size. Of you know who's going to be a three-game player? Who will definitely be a three-game player? Nick Batum. Dear. Nick Batum. Uh, that's right. Yeah. He will resolve his personal reasons, and he will be back with the team and possibly winning the NBA Cup MVP. Um, yeah. So. Last thing before we we fully move on to the in season tournament here. Actually, we know we'll talk about Harden after after this. Then we'll move on to the in season tournament. Mike, are you willing to forgive Daryl yet, or are you yeah. waiting? No, I forgive him. You forgive I have him a very now? up and down. I have three. Like I have had four different. Like I'm done with this guy. Get him out of here, and then a month later, be like, all right, you fixed it. You're good. <laughs> he's the goat. I'm sure he's going to do something in three months that's going to piss me off, and I'll be like, fuck this guy. Okay, so for now, you've forgiven him. All right. For now. Good to know. 
we'll Very figure it out the deadline. I will say, Dara, we should have just extended Maxi. Like, well, it was just a waste of time. We should have just extended Maxi. Well, we'll see what they do. He does with the plan. Yeah, we'll see. And Maxi's going to get a, a maybe even bigger bag now. I think he would have gotten it anyway if he, he made. He's going to get a max anyway. I always would have gone for the max. Yeah, yeah. but um, definitely don't want to upset him. So before we talk about the in-season tournament and who could possibly win, the Clippers are a fucking mess. <laughs> I don't understand why teams keep doing this thing. And I talked about it. Remember, like a month ago, month and a half ago, Sam, we did a podcast, and I was like. I just don't really get why they're trading for Harden. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't see the fit. I don't see the upside of it. I think that it, yeah, maybe it raises your floor, but it lowers your ceiling and blah, 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 all this stuff. And now they're 0-4 with Harden. If, if, you, if you know anything about James Harden, you know that a Sunday afternoon game is going to be a disaster for him because of some activities that he might have partaken in the night before. So he always played poorly in them uh, for the Sixers, um, and he definitely went out uh, on Saturday night, I would imagine, before they played a game at noon yesterday, Pacific time, yeah, I mean, against the Memphis Grizzlies, who had one win going into that game. I think we can say with 100% certainty he went out before on Saturday night. <laughs> yes. I mean, he, it didn't stop him in game seven. It was a Sunday afternoon game. He was going out on a Sunday afternoon against the yeah. Wine Lakers. A hundred percent. So he, 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 he goes out. He's a negative 27 in a four point loss against the Grizzlies. They, it, it, Mike was watching the game and texting us updates. And I eventually tuned into the game, but it, it was, was incredible. It was like, anytime he went out, yeah, they, it's like, it's not just the minus 27. I mean, it was literally every time he went out of the game, Clippers go on a run. It was when crazy. he comes back in, Grizzlies go on a run. It, it was crazy. Yeah. Never and seen anything like it. We were, we were following the game uh, the other day when they were playing the Mavericks and they start the game really well. <laughs> and Harden doesn't miss a shot in the first quarter. I think I don't think he scored after the first. I don't think he did either. Because yeah, I remember, because I remember being on the stream and being like, "Oh wow, Harden's got fourteen in the first." Yeah, he had fourteen in the first quarter, and he didn't miss a single shot in the first quarter. Yeah, right and then he didn't score for the rest of the game. Um, and the Mavericks were losing to uh, the Clippers by a good amount, and then came back and absolutely destroyed them. Um, PJ Tucker and James Harden. Here are some uh, fun on-offs with them so far during their time with the uh, Clippers. Okay, so in the 266 minutes that James Harden and P.J. Tucker have not played basketball for the Clippers this season, they are a plus 17.8 net rating, which is would be like by far the best in the NBA. In the minutes that James Harden has played and P.J. Tucker has not played, they are a negative 27.8 with... Uh, PJ Tucker on the court and no James Harden, they are a negative 20.8. And with James Harden and PJ Tucker both on the court, they are a negative 13 in 26 minutes. So basically, anytime Harden or Tucker are on the court, they are terrible. And uh, in the minutes that they have been off the court, they've been a very good team. So this is why I never understood why they traded for Harden in the first place. Yeah. This is the four straight loss against a disastrous Grizzlies team that has no business winning any games with the amount of injuries and guys they have out. Like, that was the first time I watched the Grizzlies this year. And I knew that obviously they had a bad record, but man, they suck. Who is Jacob Gilliard? I don't know. I've, ne I, I, me, I have never heard of this man. And I could probably tell you every person that was drafted in the 2022 draft, the draft that he was in when he went undrafted. I could not tell you a thing about this man. And he was cooking the Clippers yesterday. Like, I just don't understand how it has gone this bad this fast. Like, I thought that eventually they would have some struggles because of the things that I've brought up time and time again. But, like, this team doesn't fit. They've spent all of everything that they have to do this. And they're just fucked, dude. 
I honestly, I think the Clippers didn't realize they had a choice in the Harden thing. I think they just got the report like Harden wants to go to the Clippers, and they're like, oh, "Shit, yeah. we got we got to get James Harden now." <laughs> like, yeah, we're not gonna uh, not get him. But uh, boss is really yeah. he, wants, he wants a James Harden deal on his desk. By that, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm gonna I'm gonna run it through Chat GPT, and it <laughs> says that like we can put KJ Martin with these three salaries. Ah, uh, God. Uh, All right, shit. Yeah, yeah. Get Frank on the phone. We gotta do this. <laughs> Fuck. They said we gotta take on the PJ Tucker contract, and it's like, all right. like honestly, Fuck. like people are talking about how, like in 2018, that'd be the best team ever. Even in 2018, that team wouldn't work. Like, I, they talent their way, they if wouldn't. They, would, they wouldn't win a title. If Kawhi, if you t- well, first off, Russ being on that team in 2018 makes zero sense, but. If you tell me you give me prime James Harden, prime Kawhi Leonard, and prime Paul George, title. they wouldn't win a title. I think they could because 2018 would have the, the KD Warriors, so they wouldn't win a title. Yeah, the KD Warriors, but, but, but even it, regardless, I don't think they win a title. There's two, the, the team does not work. So we, we've we talked about this idea of just stacking stars on stars and how it just basically never works. I, I tried to think of some historical examples. And this was of stars in their 30s. Okay, so this is stars that are not in their prime. This is stars that are in their 30s. You have the 1998 Rockets, the 2012 Lakers, the 2021 Lakers again with Russ, and then this year's version of the Clippers. And then the best case scenario of this was the 04 Lakers who also had Kobe Bryant in his 20s and that when they got Gary Payton and Carl Malone. And then you, you're. I, I was trying to think of some more historical examples, but even like the Nets a few years ago, those guys were like Kyrie was still in his twenties at the time. James Harden had just turned thirty, I believe. Um, the 08 Celtics is probably the the one of the only examples of it ever really working and turning into a title, right? Yeah. Those guys were all in their thirties, I think. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I'll just have to address that comment. 2018 Rockets would have beat the Dwayne. We spent a ye- two years with Harden stance. We know. We, we got the idea. And also, I'm not talking about the 2018 Rockets. I'm talking about that team, the team, the Clippers team they have now. There's too many chefs in the kitchen. Like, there's, it's not going to work. It's definitely not going to work. But it's it, teams keep doing the Tobias Funke. These people somehow delude themselves into thinking that they'll may be able to make it work. Then Lindsay says, well, did it ever work for those people? No. <laughs> but it might for us. It it is literally over and over and over and over again (sighs) doing this and expecting different results. Like Harden doesn't look the same physically. Kawhi doesn't look the same physically. Paul George is constantly lost. Like uh, there's uh, there's a Clippers writer uh, that I follow, Lucas Hahn, who is uh, does the two one three hoops and um the podcast with Rob Flom and he talks about it all the time on the timeline. He's like, I think Paul George really wanted this trade to happen so that he could fulfill his dream of being a full-time role player and just standing in the corner 24 seven. This trade, Paul George, I mean, Russell Westbrook the most, but like Paul George, why would Paul George want this trade to happen? I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know why any of them want the trade to happen except James Harden, who like, (laughs) of course, is the only one he really does have um uh, he does have a little bit of the uh the trump lathe of heaven shit where like things just go his way you know what i'm saying like sure. like regard like the circumstances just sort of open themselves he up wriggles him. himself out of james yeah yeah exactly like how is james harden gonna wriggle his way out of this year someone that there will be he will find some way to get money from an nba team next year i don't He's know how to play for the lakers like is this not already written in stone? Like what team? Well, all stone. What, What's up? Well, what? T- well, the Rockets are too good now. Like, what team is going to take a risk? That's in LA. He doesn't have to move. They'll just give him money. That or like maybe do like a sign in trade with the Clippers if they're done with them. Maybe. I I don't I don't know I don't know if the Lakers would do that. I think they would. I don't. The Lakers might have a rough year coming up. So maybe. But I feel like LeBron would have would no would kill James Harden. Like, there's no way. I I think there's no. Uh, Jonathan says the Warriors in the comments. I think there's no, no way the Warriors no would ever that. do that. I don't even know. Like, I'm serious. Like, he might be out of teams. I don't know. 
like maybe Masai takes a chance for a year. Like I don't know, the Raptors, they never know they don't have a path ever. So who knows? I can't like oh no, I thought of it. I just thought of it. It's not the Knicks. It's the Bulls. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, there you it's go. the Bulls. Yeah, it's the Bulls. Karnasovas trying to save his job. <laughs> probably DeMar DeRozan's probably gone. Uh Clippers don't want to pay him, so the Bulls say, Hey, we'll send you the salary was a new Lonzo's expiring contract and a pick or something like that kind of move. Like it's the bulls. Yeah, they would be the last yeah. team desperate enough. Yeah. And Kevin's been saying this. He okay, said in the okay. It'll be the bulls. And then it'll be the Guangdong Tigers. <laughs> last two years. of He's going to get his, he's gonna get his number retired by two different franchises. So I, I don't know if this is still true after yesterday's game, but through three games, I'm pretty certain it's true that Harden did not get to the rim one time yesterday. In four games with them, he has not gotten to the rim one time. He has not attempted a layup or a dunk so far. And that is like screams to me, it's Jover. Like, yeah, yeah the, he's done. the fit is already questionable. He can't get to the rim anymore. And the jump, while the jump, yeah, he still no no attempts. And, and while the jump shot is still falling for now, like the second that that jump shot regresses and, also, and he doesn't the thing, have the lift, the thing, with Harden, cooked. the thing with Harden is he always comes out on fire with a new team or after an extended break, like he just always does. It's his yeah. thing. And he hasn't. So it's just going to get worse from here. It's not going to get better. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that was, that's the most shocking part about all of this is that it seems so good every time he goes to a new team, he's like rejuvenated yeah. and like always plays with like a fire under him. And this time it's just like, he's not in shape. He's not playing up to the standard that we're, we've been used to with him. Even with some of his faults, he still was anytime he was on the court, you're going to have a top five offense. And that just seemingly is not the case so far. And I just, I don't know how they're going to clean this up. They'll probably fire Ty Lu, right? Yeah. They'll probably fire Ty Lu in a month they'll, or two. And they'll trade Russ at the deadline. And then they'll trade, they'll trade yeah. Russ or something. They'll trade Russ or they'll tell Russ he's coming off the bench and that they'll, they'll, they'll try to make another trade. I, my prediction was they'll make a desperation trade like Terrence Mann and Zubach for Clint Capella, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Something like just said, they'll, they'll trade Russ for nothing. Like that. Yeah. The guys, they'll trade Russ for nothing. That, yeah. so Russ is going. Russ is obviously going to be the scapegoat. Scapegoat here. Like Russ obviously. on a buyout. You want Russ on a buyout? Yes, I, I would take Russ. Russ has actually been like in in minutes that have not involved Harden or uh, I can't remember who it was. He actually hasn't been horrible. But the problem is that you always you give Russ too much agency, and he's gonna cook he just doesn't work with Harden at all why would you want him on the court when Harden's on the court like those two just don't fit together and they they honestly even at their peaks it, outside of that one run that Maury was able to make it work with the small ball five experiment it has just never really like lived up to the the level of talent that those two guys were yeah. I just I don't I don't get it at all I have no idea oh my god it's it's just it's insane to me how fast this has gone tomorrow south. Tomorrow night in Denver is going to be awesome. That's going to that's gonna They're be playing in Denver tomorrow night? Playing in Denver tomorrow night on TNT. Oh, my God. So they're going to fall to three and seven tomorrow. Jesus. And then they got the Rockets on Friday. <laughs> a young Rockets team that has four days off in a row. Yeah. Harden might show up for that game, though. It's like a fuck you to Ime Odeko for really <laughs> ruining his shit. Yeah, actually, that's a good yeah. point. I don't think yeah. Harden has that in him at this point. Yeah. I don't know. He's he seems pretty spite based. Like I I think he can no, do but it. I, no. I just mean it as a I talent, can't. he doesn't have that in him. Yeah. I, I I'm I'm but I I think he can spirit bomb it. Like yeah. you know he can kind of he's kind of gathering like, the spirits I, from all the Houston area strip clubs. The like one match. I was gonna say, do you mean ball literal ball. spirits? Like yes, wine yes, and spirits. spirits. Yes, yeah, wine <laughs> and spirits. Yeah. Wine so, and spirits bomb. Yeah. I, I, what what's been going on? Can we trace this back to Harden throwing the cake off the boat? <laughs> Littering? I, think I thought he was locked in, dude. Yeah. I thought he was locked in too. I thought yeah. he was locked, fully locked. I, I there was too much Harden stands on my on my uh, timeline last year. So, yeah. I uh, uh, I don't want to moralize this because I hate when other podcasts do that. That whole boomer rant from the guy uh, on the Dallas broadcast about how James uh, Harden yeah. is the problem. I was just like, this is such. 
propaganda bullshit. Well, it's like, well, it's like no shit. I mean, it's kind it's of like, propaganda, but he's also kind of right. I'm not saying yeah, he's exactly. wrong, but also like what it came down to was I still understand why Harden asked out of every situation that he was in. Yeah, I get it. But I mean, like, okay, he asked out of OKC because they didn't want to pay him. He asked out of Houston because they were done. He asked I don't out of yeah, like I don't even have Brooklyn problem. because of the Kyrie thing. He asked out problem. of Philly because he, they didn't want to pay him. Like yeah, I, I don't never had a problem him. with him actually asking out. Like my yeah. problem hasn't been, oh my god, he's on a team every different year. My problem is yeah, how he conducts himself, like how he plays. Like my problem, I get it. Yeah, he doesn't show up to games. Yeah, it. I I understand that, but also the way that he made it such a personal thing for him, where like. Someone said in the comments, do you think he has zero motivation to win or just very little? I think he just likes to play basketball. He's very good at it. And he has other things that he's like, yeah, whatever. Who cares? Yeah, I don't think we lose, really. we lose. Like it's and it's fine to have that approach. Like, I really don't do did was I thrilled when it happened on the Sixers? No. Would I want the team to give him a full max contract like he wanted? No. But at the same time, like I, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world to be like, whatever. It's not. Yeah, I get it. I just not don't, want you, I don't want you anywhere near my bathroom. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, it's fine. I just, I don't know. I thought that it was some uh, some some real b- boomerang. And the thing uh, is, like, I don't think part. he cares about this, but he really has tanked his legacy well, for the last two, two I mean, three years. Part, part of the reason that we, we've talked about this before is that Harden is, like, built in a lab to be a boomer foil. Yeah. But, like, like, you know, like, both, like... Because they can't ever quite pin down Kyrie. Like, Kyrie gives them a lot of ammo, too. That's, like, the other guy that, like, boomers like to go after. Um, But there's, like, always a little bit of, like, something where it's, like, a little too close. They they don't want to be as, like, full-throated about it. Whereas, like, Harden is just, you know, asked out of three situations. um, Was on winners all this time, but, like, loses in the playoffs. Um, all the contract stuff is about money, which right. is like, um, you know, uh, in 98% of, uh, heliocentrism, culture. hard and heliocentrism ruined our, our beautiful game too. Don't forget that. Yeah. That one too. Well, it's just also like, uh, you know, the, the money thing is also just like, uh, you know, we've got to remember in every other aspect of American culture, getting the absolute most money for anything is a virtue. Of course. <laughs> and, and you're a laborer. Of course, you yeah. get as much as you possibly can. Yeah. But then like, as soon as like, uh, you know, because owners are cheap, they apportion a certain level of the, you know, <laughs> the, the payroll. And it's like, oh, well, if this guy wants more money, he's selfish because then we won't be good. You know, yeah. it's a, it's like, a, it's and he a also, game. he did yeah. take a pay cut technically last off season. That is yeah. an object. Even if, even if Maury lied to him and told him he was going to pay him, he did take, he didn't have to do that. It, yeah. it does kind of seem like reading between the lines that Maury went to him was like, Hey, let's like, let's take this. Like, it didn't seem like he really wanted to take a pay cut. Yeah. Yeah. Does exactly. anyone think that like, James Harden is making up that Daryl Morey lied to him because I, I no, don't so. for one sec. I think Daryl like, Daryl obviously, obviously lied to him. It depends on yeah. it depends yeah. on where he lied. To, if he lied to yeah. him in the sense that like he basically promised him give him max, like that's obvious. I get it. Like I could he yeah. if he if he what he meant when he lied to him was that Daryl said he was going to trade me and they didn't trade me. Like come on, man. Like you yeah. know Daryl Morey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daryl is a hundred percent a liar. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. But uh, all right, last two things here. That I want to talk about um, is the in-season tournament. Who do we think? Do we want to pull up the the standings for the in-season I, tournament? Mike's I, very I, locked I, into yeah, this. This is the most important thing to him. I'm, 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 I'm completely locked in. Yeah. So one of the things that really jumps out to me is how there's um, uh, some really bad groups, like really bad. Um, yeah. One of the West groups is the Jazz, Lakers, Blazers, Grizzlies, and Suns. Do you know who's at the bottom of that, by the way? That, <laughs> that, that one? The Suns. I see it right now. The Suns, yes. It's, uh, well, I guess the Grizzlies are a game and a half back because they've lost two. But, like, sure. um, it's it's really bad, man. Like So So how this um, works is all these teams play each other once and then it adds yeah. up. Four teams, yeah. So you play everyone plays each other once in a group. So what I don't understand is how the wild card is decided. Because so how it works. the wild card will be decided by whoever doesn't win the group. So there will be the three group winners, and everyone else who doesn't win the group, whoever has, then it's gonna it'll come down to point differential. Point differential. Okay. So basically, it's gonna be 
teams that went three and one but lost their group because of point differentials, I'm assuming, or maybe their team group won. It's going to come down to a bunch of three and one teams, and it's gonna, whatever three and one team has the best point differential will get the wild card spot. Okay. All right, let's pick the. Uh, so we'll pick our group winners. I will pick the group winners, and I will see them. Then I'll pick my okay. my bracket. I'll I'll go right. over it. All right. All right. I'm going this off the top. So West Group A, mm-hmm. I'm going to pick the Lakers. I think this is LeBron. He, this, he wants to win the in-season tournament. He wants to be the guy that wins the in-season tournament. Yeah, of course. First one. He knows his. He knows he doesn't have enough to win the title this year, so he's going to get the in-season tournament. Okay. West Group B, that will be the Nuggets, the try-hard Nuggets. Okay. And that will be the Nuggets. West Group C, that will be the Minnesota Timberwolves, who are playing yep. great basketball, serious threat to us for the in-season tournament. Who did I who, – who, who called that before the season, by the way? I just want to – <laughs> yeah, yeah. They seed beat wise, the Warriors, wise, Celtics, and Nuggets. Anyway, seed wise, number one will be the Denver Nuggets. They will have the best point differential. Okay. Number two will be the Timberwolves. They'll have okay. the second best point differential, and three will be the Lakers. They're going to win a bunch of close games. Wild card, our wild card, and I've got a bold prediction here. The wild card is going to be the Houston Rockets. Let's okay. go. Wow. Great basketball. I'm a Udoka. Really wants. Is really good. They're going to care about these in Twitter. Ime is going to want to run that score up. I don't mm-hmm. think the Warriors are going to care enough to run the score up. So those that's my West. So one Timberwolves, two um, no, one, wait, one Nuggets, two Timberwolves, three Lakers, four Rockets. So in the West, then I have the Timberwolves, wait, the Nuggets beating the Rockets. Okay. Timber, Lakers beating the Timberwolves because, you know, LeBron's going to do. Then Lakers over Nuggets, LeBron's championship. It will be Lakers over Nuggets. Lakers go to the NBA Cup in the East. Okay. East Group A, obviously, it's the Philadelphia 76ers. Clearly. They will be the one seed. What Joel, seed? The one seed. Joel is locked in. He took that shot at the end. He He's did know. In. Yeah. He, uh, Sam, did you see this? Joel at the end of the Pistons game, because it was the in-season tournament, they were up like 17, but then the scrubs came in and they were like cutting the lead in and Joel was still on the court. So Joel grabbed the ball and shot a three as time expired. And the Pistons players tried to fight him because they didn't know the rules were point differential. (laughs) And and he actually didn't get the shot off. It was after the buzzer, but it was great. He was like, give me the ball. And he just shot it. That's funny. but the, the Celtics do have the biggest point differential right now, Mike. Yeah. 14. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Plus 14. The Sixers yeah. will take care of business. <laughs> uh, well, you guys aren't worried that the Sixers are clearly in the best group in the entire tournament? No, no. I'm worried. I'm more worried about this. I'm worried about tomorrow. Tomorrow's I'm worried about tomorrow. Morning. You have the second time you're playing a team in three days, and then after that, you have the Celtics. Then literally the next day on the second half of back to back. Yeah, we don't and care. Then about Friday, that. third, fourth game in six days. Friday kind of scares me too. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. And they play the they play the Pacers on Tuesday, and then the Hawks on Friday, and that's mm-hmm. that's tough. Okay, so but, West Group A Sixers one obviously. Our number two seed is going to come from Group C. That will be the Boston Celtics. Number three seed will come from Group B, obviously. That is going to be the Miami Heat. Yeah, of course. Miami Heat are 100% winning that. They're going to win that. And then our wild card. By the way, hold on. Before you move on, the Miami Heat are 3-0 since Tyler Hero got hurt. Continue. Then our wild card, you're probably thinking it's got to be the Bucs, right? Like, who's going to be the wild card? Not going to be the Bucs. It's not going to be the Bucs. It is going to be your Indiana Pacers. Wow. It's a great offensive team. And it's going to set up a rematch in round one in Philadelphia. Everyone's going to be talking about it. Sixers, Pacers in the quarterfinals. So the chance to go to Vegas. And the Sixers are going to win a thriller. This is going to be the toughest game, the best game of the tournament. This is going to be the game that puts the NBA Cup on the map. <laughs> Sixers will win a thriller. It will come to the last minute. Halliburton and Maxi going head to head. And it will be Tyrese Maxi's coming out part. For real. It's amazing. So- I can't help but notice what you've set up on the other side of the bracket there. It will then. be Celtics Heat. Heat yeah. The chance to go to Vegas and take on the juggernaut <laughs> Sixers. And there will be a lot of buzz at that time. Like, <laughs> do these teams even want to go to Vegas oh. to take on the Sixers? It's just a it's a they're wa- it's wa- it's the death march. But the Boston Celtics will come out victorious. Jimmy Butler will sit out the court the NBA Cup, disgrace the NBA Cup. He will have left <laughs> he will have left elbow soreness and he will sit out the game court final the NBA Cup. And it will be a disgrace to the league. <laughs> you say he doesn't care? And then the, so the Heat lose? Yeah, the Heat lose. It's a huge oh, deal. Man. 
the Heat get fined. Adam Silver threatens all the to take my <laughs> And Jimmy Butler says, my elbow was really sore. I don't know what you want me to do. Unbelievable. Um, and then the, so the quarterfinals, the game of the year, the biggest Sixers Celtics game since 1983. Sixers that. Celtics quarterfinal in Vegas. The Sixers are not going, not only going to beat the Celtics, they are going to run them off the court. <laughs> it will be a 25 point win. Wow. Joel Embiid is going to drop 45. He will cement himself as the best player in the East. And the Sixers will officially declare ownership of the Boston Celtics. <laughs> Because of the NBA Cup. <laughs> and then final. The most important important thing. Final. The final. <laughs> biggest game of in NBA history. Mm-hmm. Sixers, Lakers, live from Las Vegas. It is going to be a close game. The, the Lakers will be down. The Sixers will be down 10 at halftime. It'll just be like, man, this is LeBron's cup. He just wants it. He needs the narrative. And in the second half, Kelly Oubre emerges. And he comes out and he scores 23. He's coming back. This is three weeks from now. Yeah, actually, Kelly Oubre doesn't emerge. I got to keep this realistic. Kelly Oubre does not emerge. I was going to say, I think he's what happens is six weeks. Tyrese Maxey goes nuts in the second half. He's owning Austin Reeves. He's doing the too small thing to Austin Reeves. (laughs) He's crossing him up. And then in the fourth quarter, with two minutes left, Sixers are going to be down 106 105. Wow. Joel Embiid is going to score seven straight points. Finished off with an N1 dunk over Anthony Davis. He does the suck it celebration in Anthony Davis's face. Yep. He gets fined, and the NBA Cup goes to its rightful home in Philadelphia. And 48 hours later, the Philadelphia 76ers raise the NBA Cup banner on a Monday night against the Washington Wizards, and then they go out and they lose 113 to 95. <laughs> I've got to admit, you laid out a pretty compelling case. This is kind of a best case scenario for the. the... I'm not reading off a word doc. That was straight from the head. Yeah, that was straight. all from the head. Improvising, freestyle off the top of the dome. Amazing. Now, this Amazing is, work. Ch- Chiodo's like Professor Trelawney, where it just his mouth is hanging open and like some sort of other being that has uh, some sort of cognizant sight is uh, channeling through him. What, he's, just, what, he's so very so numb right now. Yes. So tap my in. dream. I cannot yeah. wait. Yeah. I'm very excited. Honestly, I'm very excited for do you, does Pat Bev cry? Yes, Pat Bev cries. Pat Bev is very emotional. Yeah. I forgot my tournament MVP. Tournament MVP will be Joel Embiid. Of course. And my all tournament team will be Tyrese Maxey. Uh Tyrese Maxey, Tyrese Halliburton, LeBron James, obviously. It was going to be Jimmy Butler, but he will be disqualified. For all I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my other four will be Tobias Harris and Amazing. Joel Embiid. That is my all tournament team. Amazing! I'm so excited. I honestly think that this this in season tournament is going to revolutionize the league. It will. The Sixers Pacers game is going to be one of the greatest games of all time in the quarterfinals. Undeniably, yeah. yeah. Can, can I just say, like, all irony is, I genuinely think this is actually, like, a re- pretty fun. I think my only quibble is that they should be doing this in, like, January or February. Yeah. Like, my other my other only complaint about it is I wish that they would have it in a way where, like, anyone could play anyone in the finals. Like, we could see six or Celtics in the finals. Yeah, yeah. Like, gonna, I, don't, I don't see why it has to be East versus West. I guess for the group no. thing. But I don't see why it has to be East versus West. So I'll say this much. I agree with most of what you said, Mike. I think the Lakers stink. I watched them a lot this year. I do think they stink, but that's why they're going to win because LeBron knows the team stinks. I mean, if, if I, I'm going to take my finals matchup for the in season tournament, the Minnesota Timberwolves are taking it home. I'm copying Bill Simmons. Taking They've been my team. What do you mean? Taking it home? They're winning. Oh, man. They're winning the whole thing. Wow. Who are they beating? I do not I, say. I don't want to say. Do not say it. I don't want to say. If the Sixers lose the NBA Cup, that will be the worst sports bet of the last year. <laughs> the last year. We will be there no matter what. <laughs> we will be there. It will be a disaster. <laughs> yeah, if the Sixers get to the NBA Cup and lose, oh, jeez. I'm not going to say it. It's going to be a disaster. But Minnesota Timberwolves, Anthony Edwards, MVP. Lock it in. Yeah, Joel's not losing to Rudy Gobert in the NBA Cup final. I didn't say it was the Sixers. That's why I didn't oh, I thought you it. Said, I thought you meant it was the Sixers. No, I didn't want to say who it was because I knew you. I thought you implied the Sixers. No, I was actually implying the Celtics, but we'll. Oh, we'll 
But do the Sixers get the Celtics Vegas? Celtics are very much low key tryhards. Uh, they are, but do the Sixers get to Vegas and they don't lose? The I think they get to Vegas, they lose to the Celtics, which would be heart just breaking. All, 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 all things considered, uh, but you know they 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 live, they learn, they grow from it. You know they learn what they need to beat the Celtics in the playoffs. So, um, and it will also be the third time we play the Celtics in the first like fucking month of the season. It's ridiculous. By the way, if we get to Vegas, we get to a semifinals. Oh. That changes the vibe. It's, it's technically the East Finals of the NBA Cup. <laughs> I'm counting it. I'm counting it. This is an ECF. I agree. Yeah. 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 Maxie's done miracles. Nurse has done miracles. I'm counting it. That's, that's, that's amazing. Pacers. That's amazing. November, what is December like 3rd or something? December 5th, I think. Amazing. Sixers, Pacers, TNT. Everyone's going to be talking about it. It's gonna be the best game. It's gonna be the best game in NBA Cup history. Tyrese first Tyrese. And yes. by the way, you know who the Sixers started off their 2000s finals run against? The Indiana Pacers. Stay woke. And just gonna, f- Maxi Halliburton in that game is going to be like uh, Mitchell Murray in the bubble, except Let's legit. Go. Except legit. Except not fake. Yeah. 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 Also, I do just want to point out when the Sixers made that run, I was 11 years old. And I had, was just getting into basketball and they lost the first game and I was really upset. And they were like, why are you so upset? And I was like, the Sixers lost in the playoffs because <laughs> I followed football and I thought it was single elimination. You weren't locked in. I was you not locked, locked in. in. <laughs> 11 year old me was not locked into the rules. So <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately the they got the their NBA revenge. Cup. That is the case in the NBA Cup. Yeah, it is. It's a one and done situation, which I mean, I understand. I totally get it. The Sixers but... losing the NBA Cup will be a disaster because everyone else is going to be like, "Well, who cares? It doesn't matter." I'm going to be just devastated. Exactly. Yeah. This this is this means everything to me. We will be there. Um. <laughs> so, last thing I want to say before we get out of here. Oh, you're is... not going to let me. You're not going to let me do my prediction. Yeah, I need. Oh, to... I'm sorry. I forgot. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Let, hold on. Hold the hold the hold the horses. Okay. Let me just run through. Let, let me real quick just run through uh, my teams. Okay. I agree. Group A will belong to the Philadelphia 76ers. I agree. Group B will belong to the Miami Heat. I believe Group C will belong to the Boston Celtics. However, however, my Group A wild card team coming out. That's right. It's the Atlanta Hawks. Is that playoff Trey Youngs? Is that playoff Trey Youngs? Oh, geez, you're not you're not doing this. Yeah, you're not, hold, hold, oh, you're not no. setting this up. No, hold on, hold on. No, <laughs> there's no Ben Simmons. There's no Ben Simmons. Don't worry. This is this, this, don't worry. Um, we move over to the West, where the Utah Jazz dominate Group A as everyone expected, um, vaulting themselves into the quarterfinal. Um, what's hold on? What's what's that? Is that the that's right. It's the Dallas Mavericks and Luka Doncic. Oh God! Coming out of coming out of Group A, they've already have a loss, but I think they're going to win out from here on out. Um, Luka in have... Vegas, dude. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait for <laughs> Which it. Just live in a hookah bar. And then what's this? Oh my God! Is that the Minnesota? No, it's not the Minnesota. It's the Sacramento Kings. Oh my God! The Sacramento Kings. You're just wish casting at this point. Emerging from the West. And what's this? Who's the wild card? It's the Golden State Warriors who love trying hard um, when they're um, not actually uh, the the other team isn't trying very hard. Whoa, let's go. Golden State Warriors. So if we go, if if we look at this, okay, I agree we have um, Heat Celtics. I think I think Jimmy Butler actually takes this very seriously. I came to the exact <laughs> opposite conclusion, and the Heat actually beat the Celtics in round one of the of the knockout. Um, he he I, comes out and he's just uh, yeah. staring across the court at Der- a frightened Derek White. Yeah, <laughs> Jimmy, locked in. Yeah, they're, they're going they're going to shatter Chris Porzingis's pelvis in this game. <laughs> like there's going to be like some sort of insane injury because they're just in full physical. Um, also, but, keep in mind they might not have Tyler Hero, and they are three and zero without Tyler Hero. That's what I was going to say. If Tyler Hero is back, the Celtics will easily um, skate on this, yes. in this game. Um, I do think I, I think Hawks Sixers is going to be um, uh, one forty five one forty one affair. Um, but I do believe the Sixers will prevail there. Um, and I, I think that the Sixers do right the wrongs against the um, nasty Miami Heat. Um, I believe the top-seeded Utah Jazz 
will annihilate the Golden State Warriors, um, giving everyone what they want, everyone who's tuning in. And then uh, you have the Dallas Mavericks sadly defeating the Sacramento Kings. Uh, and then you have the uh, Dallas Mavericks defeating the Utah Jazz, setting up a Mavericks um, uh, a Mavericks 76ers finals, wherein we have the two all-NBA guards going head-to-head in Luka Doncic and Tyrese Maxey. From uh, Dallas, by the way. Little yeah. wrinkle. Luca from Philadelphia. Well, okay. Right, anyway, continue. yeah, exactly. Grant Williams is an Eagles fan, so it can't yeah, yeah, it was a Grant Williams uh, Eagles fan. Uh, I think the Mavericks win <laughs> based on uh, that they have a lot of guys on their team who, if they win five hundred thousand dollars, will triple their income. So <laughs> <laughs> get a lot of veterans minimum guys. Yeah, a lot of veterans try really hard. Got to do so. I'll be picking the Dallas Mavericks. In the end. I was gonna say it's, it's really saying something that Sam's predictions are way more of a fanfic than Chiodos. You're just yeah. wish casting everything you want to see into the into the world. And also, the Knicks might be a little bit underrated here. I I tend to agree with Clyde. I would have said the Knicks, but they already lost that. Yeah, they already have a loss. Um, and they they they. I, I kind of wanted to say the Hornets, but yeah. no. well, we'll learn tomorrow night, Tuesday night. Everyone will be locked just, into their television. Lock it in. The Milwaukee Bucks will not get to the quarterfinals. It's it's they're not getting on a group play. So teams with two losses are like essentially eliminated. Yeah, they're not going to get. Yeah. yeah. So so the, so there's three teams that are eliminated right now. Um, obviously the Grizzlies and obviously the Wizards. Do you know what the third team that's eliminated with two losses right now is? I know it. It's the Oklahoma City yeah, I know. already. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. they already have two losses in the in season tournament. So fair, that's a brutal group. That's a yeah, that, and that's tough, man. Like they would have they that, oh, yeah. that would have been if you Adam put the Silver was you put the Thunder like in Group A, they're a wild card team. Oh yeah, easy, easy. I they when they were building like by the way these groups were like not random. This is like some of the most biggest bullshit. Like that the putting the Suns and the Lakers two dog shit teams in uh, Group A that the national media wanted to be good. Get out of here. Anyway, I'm uh, I'm very sad about that. I would have liked the Thunder to be in the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. And unlike Shea Gilgis Alexander or a man stat padding against lottery teams. Mm-hmm. Tyrese Maxey will be showing up for the end season tournament and he will be locked in. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Um, so last thing before we get out of here, changing of the guard season, Bill's been talking about this for like a fucking year. And I really do think that this is the season that we're getting it because I've looked at and keep in mind, BPM isn't a perfect stat, but it's one of the only ones that we have available for these first few games. I love that they're, they're, they're willing to let it fly and just post those after like three games or whatever they post it. But of the top 20 guys at BPM this year, the only players 30 or older are LeBron, Steph, CJ McCollum, and then Anthony Davis, who is 30 years old. This really does feel like, a bunch of new rising stars. You have Shangun blowing up, Maxi blowing up, Anthony Edwards taking over, and all of these older dudes. Like I, I said it the other day. I was like, I'm. If I were a team, I would have no interest in acquiring any of these older guys. PG, Kawhi, all the guys in the Clippers, all all the dudes that are like thirty and up. Clay Thompson, like they had their day in the sun. They had amazing careers, and it is now shifting to be a 30 and younger league. These guys that were born in, you know, the late eighties, early nineties, like they're, they're starting to phase out. And like, like I said, LeBron and Steph are the only two that remain in that top category in terms of, and like CJ McCollum's already gotten uh, injured. Unfortunately had like a a collapsed lung. We know AD is going to get injured at some point. It just feels like unless you're LeBron or Steph, you're not able to extend your career in the way that a lot of, and I guess Chris Paul too, but like mid to late thirties, it's really starting to kind of unravel for a lot of these guys. It feels like. Especially all these guys have played so much basketball. Dude, so like, much. <laughs> like KD like went on, went on, uh, was playing in the June for, or May or June for what the past 10 years. Yeah, and then he also like, played in the Olympics too, right? Yeah, and he's played in he's played in 2016, 2020, 
and he's playing 2012. So he's playing every Olympic since 08. He yep. didn't play in 08. Every Olympic since 12. But Harden, like Harden's, he he killed himself in that 21 playoff. Yeah. Um, yeah. All these guys, the amount of basketball these guys plays compared to like 35. And granted, those guys were watched too. But like, granted, to like 35 year olds, like 30 years ago, just LeBron and Stafford is superhuman. It's crazy. Like, they're just on another planet when it comes to this. KD has been, tw- he's 26 in the league in BPM to start KD, this season. KD's still good. He's really good. He's just, he's I think very he, good. He's taken, he's take clearly on the decline now. He's not first team all NBA Kevin Durant yeah. anymore. And also, you yeah. just know, you just know he's going to miss like 25 games minimum. Yeah. 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 And now it's just like all of these dudes who two or three years ago, we're given up and it reminds me of like the conversations that we've been having over the last year, which is like, is it worth it to give up all these picks for these stars anymore? And I've kind of come to the conclusion that unless they're in their prime, no, the only one that's worked out is Anthony Davis. Yeah. And I also think we're entering a new, new era where that's that super team star. Era, I think it's fading now. And we're now entering the, like the nuggets and the way the Sixers are kind of being built where you have these, two stars and then a bunch of role player high level role players surrounding them. Yeah. I think that's the way to build a team now. That at least for now until and especially, and especially until we with, have two guys at the peak yeah. of their powers team up again like mm-hmm. we did with KD and, and Curry. Especially with the new CBA. Yeah. 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 And uh as as Nate points out in the comments, AD was 26 when he got traded. Yeah. Like Damian Lillard was 32 and he's 33 now. Like yeah. like the, these guys trading all this stuff, uh, trading the halls that they traded for Kevin Durant, like at 33, 34, like it's proven to really not be worth it over time. And like, honestly, the Lakers got lucky that that trade wasn't way worse than it could have been. Like they won the title in the bubble, which, you know, part of that was like, they almost didn't restart the season. And then on top of that, Brandon Ingram has had injury problems. Lonzo balls had injury problems. Josh Hart's been a nice role player. The fourth pick in the draft could have been, Darius Garland, but it was a bad draft. Or, but other than him, it like it was a bad draft. Yeah. Like they traded back and all this shit. So like those kind of trade packages, we're we're seeing not really work out over the course of time for anyone except for the Lakers, really. Yeah, it's worked out. I can't think of another one that's wor- worked out. I mean, the Bucks gave up a lot of picks for Drew, but that wasn't a superstar trade. Yeah. Um, I guess that I guess technically Drew could be categorized in there, even though we've also it was the same before. type of package, but he's not a super. Yeah. He's not someone who's coming in and changing your identity, changing your culture. Yeah, you know? um, yeah. I, I, none of them. Like I said that's another thing with the Clippers. Like I, do you, they just fundamentally just did not see the way the NBA is going right now. But what about like because the Harden trade? <laughs> I mean, like. They were really fucking good. It's just like the circumstances the are such. Yes. Yeah, but it here's was, the thing. They yeah. got injured, and that's what we're talking about. Is like these guys that get older. Harden had never had an injury his entire career. And all three of those guys were big injuries. And then, and, and and then all three of them, yeah. It's like at, at once. Like KD didn't really like, get injured like that. People, and I people. know that the, it was at least built into the experience is my point here. Is like... It's not to say that it wasn't worth the risk at the time. Yeah. It's to say that when these guys get a little bit older, they're all like this. You have to build this variance and injury shit into the trades. I, I guess just my thing is it's like if I'm thinking back through like like if they had like stayed together, like you would have still had like Nick Claxton and you still would have had like some of these other guys. You know, it's not like all of these all their players who are good now were like traded over guys that like you know what i'm saying like that came back in the trades part of their pieces i think i think the nets were gonna be really good i mean the only time we saw them healthy they yeah, fucking they were they were really they were they were they were yeah yeah. yeah so but i also i also I, think like you go you know just gonna, i was just gonna say that i i think that it's I think it depends on the caliber of guy that you're trading for and what you're adding to the team. I think everything is, is kind of individualized. You know what I'm saying? I think there will come a time. I think teams like the, um, I think some of these teams that are larger market, like the Lakers and uh, eventually like, I think the Knicks are going this way. I think the heat are going to go back to this. I think those type of um, area, like areas are going to be more prone to getting a third star in the trade and then 
because they, by virtue of how nice it is to live there and how much guys want to play there, are going to be able to get higher quality guys for the minimum than a lot of the other sure. places. Yeah. You know, like so, I think that that is going to happen. But I think places like um, Denver and Boston, <laughs> you're going to have to, you know, get the two star guys that everybody else is going to need to be paid to go to work there. <laughs> you know? So that will be a little different. So, but yeah, just the next thing, like. People mm-hmm. like a lot of times say, well, if they didn't get hurt, they would have won the title. But you had hard James Harden, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant. Like they're gonna get hurt. It's just how those guys get hurt. They get hurt a lot. Just well, like Kyrie you, gets hurt a lot. It was yeah. it, the the Harden one was Harden surprising. at that time hadn't yet, but yeah. since then and Durant, Durant at that time was what he was a year coming off the Achilles. He got injured I mean, during that year. Yep. Um, he, I mean, he was still. Up. On fucking oh, yeah. Durant was um, Durant was unbelievable. Yeah. That yeah, and you know he it's was amazing. He was as good as he was considering yeah. the context. Yeah. To be honest, right? Yeah, but uh, but yeah. So just a just a thing to keep an eye on as the season goes along, because sometimes these older guys start slower too. Yeah. Like Dame is a famous uh, guy who starts slow. Jimmy Butler is another one who, yeah. by the way, is is averaging currently. Uh, 18 points per game on 42 uh percent from the field like like just some things to keep an eye on Kawhi is another guy who started slow last year and picked it up as the season went on but i really do think that it is like those guys are aging out demar Derozan doesn't look like the same player this year like yeah. it, it especially guys that rely heavily on athleticism i think that this could be a year we're seeing drops for guys who are normal all-stars like we're just like oh pencil them in for all stars or pen them in for all stars, and uh, yeah we'll we'll see a lot new names and faces this year. So one guy, yeah, uh, one guy you forgot to mention there, Giannis, you kind of <laughs> keep forgetting, relying on athleticism. Giannis cat challenge trade. <laughs> cat, can, who's gonna age better? I would get cat. There's two yeah, cat, there, cat can shoot, man. He's skilled big. By the way, I just cannot believe it's a. Dis- People always talk about Embiid. We're talking about Giannis. Like, that guy's going to age terribly. Okay. Yeah. He's not yeah. sound like Everly. I mean, what has Giannis done recently except score 54 points against the Pacers? It doesn't take anything to score 50 Yeah, but they lost the Pacers. game. Why don't you score 50 and win Proof. against the Pacers? Maxi won. Yeah. yeah. Maxi better, sadly. Proof in the pudding. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right. right. All right. Thank you for joining me. That was a lot of fun. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. I'll be back tomorrow night for uh, the play-in. I'm sorry, play-in. In season tournament, season tournament game. game. Cup. I think we're, oh. all, we, we're calling it the right. NBA Cup. I got it. Oh. I'm, I'm kicked out of I'm kicked out of Celtics fandom for uh, being a part and a party to this um, uh, maxi um, <laughs> orgy that happened here. We will. I'm, we not, I'm not allowed. <laughs> we will win the NBA Cup for Kelly Oubre. We're doing it for you. That's right. We're doing it for Kelly. Right. For Kelly. <laughs> For Kelly. I'll be back streaming Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Playback. Take care. Bye. Sign up for the Patreon if you have not already. Please. Please.